Okay. Actually, okay. did you want notes? Oh, you know, I won't take it because this is going to be my stand for my bike. Al. 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 Do you head mic? Can you, can anybody not hear me? Me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would be nervous. I've got a voice that travels, so that's alright. the connection. Can use a microphone if you want. No, I don't. Quite a hand to go to us. Okay, um, firstly, today I was at work, um, and whilst at work, something kept going through my head. Um, I read the scriptures in Colossians, and it read as follows Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Okay, a lot of those things, a lot of those words even, you may not understand fully, and they may just be complicated to you, um, and I'll go through them one by one. But today, I was going through that, and the word put to death, Paul says to these, uh, these people, is put it to death, get rid of it. You know, don't want to, don't want to have this thing back again. And it's going through my head, and as a, as a Christian, and there are, I know there are Christians in here today, I would just like to say, as a Christian myself, who used to embrace these things, I don't want to do these things anymore, and that is through Christ. The fact that you know what Christ has done for you on the cross, he took the ultimate sacrifice, and not only with that, he took the keys of life from Satan and his dominions. He took all of that, all for you to go to heaven. And the fact that he done that, it just echoes in my heart to say, you don't want to do these things anymore. I, I don't want to do these things anymore. And the fact if you do these things, that Christ will forgive you for, for doing them is just a miracle in itself. Not to say you should take that for, uh, for granted. And somebody said to me today, and uh, Paul spoke on this in the last couple of weeks, her name's Emma, and she said, um, she's basically a supervisor at our works. And uh, she came up to me, she approached me, she said, Alan, you're always happy. You come to work, you do your short shifts, you don't get paid much money, which is what you should get come, which is what you should come to work for to earn money. You don't get paid much because you do short shifts and you're always happy. Why? And you know, at first I said, Well, I can I'm gonna attribute that to being a Christian, having a relationship with Christ. I always make sure I say a relationship with Christ because that word is just being tarnished all over the world. Um, and she said, mm, fair enough, as any, you know, unbeliever does, you know, uh, he's a nutcase, whatever. Uh, <laughs> let's just put it simply. Um, and uh, it, it was good to see that in my works I had been noticed. And today, of all days, I'm doing my talk. It was just, she just approached me out of nowhere, you know. We, we never usually work together, but she approached me and said, look, I've, I've noticed it, you know, and et cetera, et cetera. And that really touched me. And just those things, right, let, let me just, you know, say what they are. Sexual morality. You know, that is, effectively, you're sleeping with people whenever you want, whoever you want, and without a care in the world of who that person is, or any respect for themselves, or yourself, for that matter of fact. Impurity. Um, easiest way I could say this is, uh, you could say sex before marriage. You know, you, you, you're really, you're, your body's no longer impure when you consecrate your marriage. Lust. Lusting is wanting after something or somebody you know, which, in a sense, you shouldn't really want. You know, that, that could be so many different things, but um, I think you can all imagine something that you've lusted after which you shouldn't have really wanted, or you've like, oh, she's beautiful, or whatever, you know, or he's a stunner, etc., etc. Um, evil desires, wishing some, on someone or something, you know, something horrible. I wish he or she would lose their job. I wish this person would fail their course because they're so arrogant, they're so cocky. I mean, some people are like, oh, Alan's so arrogant and so cocky. And yeah, you know, I, in a sense, I am. You tone it down a bit. And um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I lowered my, my tone on that one. And greed, you know, the fact you want more and more and more and more and more. And um, what you've got is never enough. And these things, I myself, you know, I no longer desire these things. I, I no longer, I mean, what I've got now, what I've got, I'm, I'm, you know, I give thanks to the Lord for what I got every day, and I think everyone else should. Because Paul spoke on this about the woman who was in a German um, Holocaust camp, you know, and the fact that because she had lice and she, because she had these things infested in her body, she wasn't raped by guards. And that story alone just says, no matter what situation you're in, give thanks. So I give thanks for what I've got, and I think everyone here should, you know. And that really is the, the, 
that in its entirety. Um, but I want to move on to something else, and it's, it's to focus on Brady, uh, my closest friend who I see as a brother, not only in Christ, but uh, on, this, you know, on, this heaven, on this earth. Sorry. And um, he, he didn't want to say this today, um, but he, he, he didn't mind if, if I said it. And Brady's a new Christian. He, he didn't know Christ about a year and a half ago. Maybe, yeah, maybe even a year ago. And when I first asked him, Brady, you should come to church. You should actually see what it's all about because he, he had this tarnished image in his mind that it was, I mean, from what he's been to, pubes, a weird man at the top, just talking a lot of grim stuff. That's usually poor, but I mean, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking, but I'm joking. And um, all, all these, and you know, this old, horrible church thing. And he, and he didn't want to know that. And I'm sure there are those here who still think that about church. You know, this is our church at the moment. Um, and his dad said, there is no way you're going to church, in those words. You're not going to church. I don't want you being a Bible basher, in, in effect. He said that. You know, and I was quite distraught by that. And Brady was, you know, oh, can't come to church. Oh. Anyway, I kept praying for him. And about six months down the line, that's six months. That's a long wait. I waited. Brady came to church. I think he didn't, he didn't ask his dad or anything. He just, he just came on his own accord. And he came more and more often, more often, and he made a commitment. But what I want to get to, this is the point here, guys, and it's the power of prayer. Asking the Lord for things, giving thanks to the Lord for the things that you've got, and etc., etc. As I said, you know, with what I just spoke about, greed, just give thanks. And Brady was in a situation, if you want to get that, um, Brady was in a situation where he had no job, and he didn't, and to be honest, he didn't have much money at all, or anything of, of um, that caliber. And He'd met Hattie, his um, lovely fiance, and he needed he needed a job and he needed certain things, and so uh, obviously it was a miracle to me that he was allowed to come to church. He came to church and he compelled himself to come to church. But what was more important was the fact that Brady had committed in prayer. He told me, Alan, I uh, I prayed today that I'll get a job. I I I said I I just spoke to the Lord and I asked him. If I could have a job, I need it. And he knows my circumstances. I was like, oh, fantastic, great. And he, he got a job, but it was an agency work, and it was hard work. I'm not going to lie, it was tenfold harder than my work. And he was getting paid about the same, getting taxed on it, and all this lot. And he was walking on with very little money. And he was, he was having to do this, and, he, and it wasn't reliable. He didn't know when he was going to have this work. And then to top it all off, you know, um, he's going to get married, so he needs these finances, and he's now he's struggling for a job. So what, what does Brady do? He, he's, he's still praying, you know, and he's still praying, and he prays for Hattie to get a job. And lo and behold, Hattie gets a full-time job in itself. That's a miracle. Um, and it's an apprenticeship, but it's, it's getting better and better each week that she goes there because there's perks of that job. And then Brady continues to pray, and then lo and behold, again, there's eight vacancies at my place of which Brady would love to work. I speak to my manager and Brady's now got a job working at the cinema. He's prayed for um, uh, members of his family and he's prayed for things in the past and the Lord has blessed Brady and those around him by answering those things. And, I, and for the youth today to implement this onto your lives, not only the things that I mention as Christians, young Christians, try and refrain from Focus on the Lord. But if you are struggling, ask the Lord for the things, ask God for things that you need or things that are important to you, especially within the faith, and he will answer them. And, to, and just to sum that up, Brady went through horrible work, work that was just, I mean, I, I went on one job and it was just ridiculous. He was getting paid for just too much work, for too little money. And... That's, a, that's just a typical thing. You may not have to go through it straight away. You will encounter some roughage. But just give thanks to the Lord for what you've got. Guys, that's effectively my talk today. And it is very rushed because the majority of it was today at work. I had to um, come up through it. Right, thanks guys. Um, but don't applaud me. Applaud what Christ has done for myself and for each and every one of your lives which you can give thanks for. Cheers. Uh -huh.